Ahoy! Captain Benzi here, still suffering with a head cold, coming at you with a quick video to discuss the latest patch notes that have recently landed. I do apologise that this video is a little bit delayed, um, as I've said to a couple of people. Ultimately, I'm not getting the notes as they arrive anymore, I'm having to spot when they, uh, when they go live in the game. Um, of course, I've been so busy in the UK, I fly back to Zimbabwe tomorrow. Um, I have been so busy in the UK that I've barely had time to play, hence I'm still sitting down in Diamond 2 and Diamond 3. Um, yeah, I only made it to Masters 1 this time round because I just had no time to play. Um, so yeah, um, the patch notes kind of jumped out at me and I saw a couple of videos coming up here and there, uh, like Blade's uh, patch note analysis. I haven't watched it yet, um, I didn't want to influence my thoughts on all of this, um, but I was like, oh, there are patch notes. So I've jumped into the game, I've spotted them, I've given them a quick read over, um, and I'm going to give you my thoughts now. Now, as usual in this kind of video, there's going to be no flashy graphics at all, nothing overly surprising or, you know... Uh, like, you know, no clever editing, that kind of thing. It is just me and my thoughts. You can put it down, listen to it while you're doing the washing up, put on the kettle, grab yourself tea and a biscuit sort of thing and let uh, hear my thoughts. Um, as usual, do let me know your thoughts at the end. Come and join us on the Gaming Galleon Discord um, or in the comments section below. Anyway, let us jump right in. So starting with GDI, we have first of all Lang. The drone cost has increased from 40 to 50 Tiberium. Healing drone has proven to be a bit too strong, increasing its cost will bring its power level to be more in line with the other commanders. I can't disagree with that. Certainly I've said numerous times in the past, I kind of like where Lang is. He's in a good position. He's no longer in that sort of situation where it's, oh look, it's Lang. They're playing a double Harvester tech deck. There is now a little bit of variation in Liang decks. I think those Liang decks are still going to be good. It's Again, this is the MSV deck getting a little bit of a nerf. Lang MSV has always been a bit of an insane combination. That tones it down a little bit. I don't think that takes Lang out of play. I think that's still very solid for Liang. Drone Swarm. Movement speed increased from 6.928, very accurate speed number there, to 8. GDI lost a lot of its anti-infantry firepower when we nerfed Drone Swarm, returning some of their movement speed will increase their viability while staying true to their theme. Yeah, basically this pushes the Drone Swarm back up into being more like the Nod Venom. Something that you can move quickly around the battlefield, get it into position, hose down some infantry um, as quickly as possible, but they are still very vulnerable to any incidental fire. If you've got like a missile or laser squad or attack bikes, that kind of thing, and a drone swarm goes past it, they are still gonna take hefty damage um, just incidentally as they move into position. They can just get into position a bit faster, so it's slightly less incidental damage. You know, if you if you pass a one, uh, one hex um, of a laser squad, it's gonna do that little bit less damage now, which is great. That's great, it means that drone swarms are solid. I like drone swarms, I've always liked where they are, um, I think there's been a couple, sorry, I've always liked their sort of, their idea, their, their, their place. Um, I never really enjoyed drone swarms when they were the ridiculous overpowered Solomon drone swarm deck. Um, but I think that puts them into a nice position as an alternative to the Nod Venom. Grenadiers increased projectile speed by 25%, allowing them to imply their, uh, apply their EMP a little faster. <laughs> More Grenadier buffs, all right then. One of my favourite GDR units gets even more buffs. I'm never going to. I'm never going to tire of seeing Grenadiers just get better and better. To me, they were amazing when they launched. They've had nothing but buffs since then. So that makes me happy. My little Grenadiers are going to be running across the battlefield and nuking things. Um, it's also actually an important point. Sorry, I'm scrolling back up to that. Um, allows them to apply their EMP a little faster. That actually really works against things like chem buggies and shatterers. It means that when uh, that, like a chem buggy comes in, in to hit a, uh, a grenadier squad, or when a shatterer comes in to hit the grenadier squad, the grenadiers actually get that first EMP off that little bit faster. They stun the, uh, the vehicle before it's able to start dealing damage to them. It's a really, really powerful little ability. Grenadiers, if you've not been using them up until now, now really is the time. Mammoth tanks decreased from 7500 to 6900. Mammoth tank has been quite the stalwart when it gets out, should give players an easier time dealing with it. Yeah, I've been saying this for ages. Mammoth tanks have been a little bit too good. I kind of disagree that health was the way that they needed to go about this, but okay. 
I've actually done a game accidentally under this patch using Mammoth Tanks. They're still viable, 100% they're still viable. The decrease in health is definitely noticeable. Um, they take a little bit more damage incidentally, um, and things like Orcas do really quite dent them now. Um, but in fairness, they're still solid. They're still great endgame units. They're just not, congratulations, I got a Mammoth Tank out. I now win unless you have Mammoth Tanks. Slingshot's health decreased from 1800 to 1500. I can hear Jade Zion screaming with joy in the background here. The Slingshot has become a great unit, but it's performing a bit too well. The change will make it easier to deal with while still maintaining its excellent damage capabilities. Yeah, you know what? The, th the Slingshot is, it's cheap. It moves into position nice and easily. It's a decent speed and it hovers so you can park it on lakes. Um, and it does insane damage to aircraft. Now, however, something like a mohawk or an orca can get in and actually really quite hurt it. Um, a slingshot now needs to be positioned properly. <coughs> Excuse me. A slingshot needs to be positioned properly to get some decent use out of it. Then the Banshee. Tiberium cost increased from 50 to 60. Banshee was a bit too efficient at 50 cost, so we're returning it to its original. Now, I love Banshees. I was super hyped when they went from 60 down to 50. I thought that put them in a really good position. Again, I'm slightly disappointed that it is just a straight up nerf to the Banshee. Um, like just a reversion nerf, sorry. I don't mind the nerf. I think the nerf is important because yes, they were ridiculous. Banshees were everywhere last season. But I think just reverting it, it it's kind of saying, well, we don't know what to do with this. Um, I can't help but think tuning its damage may not have been the right way, but things like movement speed or its turn speed, that kind of thing, to me it's a bit more creative. I don't know, Banshees, Banshees were viable at 60. I liked them a bit too much at 50, which of course is a sign that they need a nerf, but I don't think they're removed from the game at 60. Certainly it's damaging to Nodair. Nodair is not going to be absolutely ubiquitous anymore. Um, yeah, I, it hits the Banshee quite hard especially with uh, slingshots um, still being a thing. But with the slingshot nerfs, banshees, I don't know. I don't know. I need to see what a banshee versus a slingshot actually does, especially when you consider cost for cost. I, I think ultimately the slingshot is going to do a little bit too well for my liking there, though, in fairness. Banshees, not god-awful, but not as good as they once were. Ken buggies, infantry damage decreased from 80 to 72. That's a 10% decrease. Ken Buggy's been a powerful unit for a long time and has made Nod's anti-infantry power too efficient, therefore we're reducing its damage output. Well, I don't know about that one, Chief. Um, in fairness, yeah, they're probably right. The Ken Buggy has been fairly powerful, but it's always been fragile. That's kind of been the thing with the Ken Buggy. It is ludicrously powerful, but it falls apart to a stiff breeze. You can look at it angrily and the wheels pop off. So, dropping it down by 10% damage? Again, I kind of want to see this in action to make a proper judgement, but to me that feels a little bit harsh, especially since Grenadiers just got a boost that is really going to affect Ken Buggies versus Grenadiers interaction. I just, ah, ha, ha, I'm not so sure about this one. The Ken Buggy change here actually has me slightly nervous. I think that may have done a bit too much damage to the Ken Buggy, but again, that's just my opinion. I could very much be wrong about that, and I'm sure I'm going to have some of you in the comments section below saying, yeah, you're wrong, you're wrong, it's fine, it's minor, it's working great. I just think that, quite frankly, losing that Ken Buggy and the Grenadier buff, GDI is in a bit too good a position there. Anyway, let's move on. Fnatic, vehicle damage decreased from 37 to 32. Who saw this one coming? Of course, Fnatic's just wreck war dogs and cyber wheels at, a, at an astonishing rate. And they do a scary amount of damage, incidentally, to things like pit bulls and predators. Like, seriously, it's actually kind of worrying. Fnatic's were never meant to do that much damage to vehicles. I can understand why they'd take it down. All for that. Venom speed decreased from 9.236, again, a very explicit, accurate number, to 8. 
Venom has been doing very well in its core matchups while also moving extremely fast, slightly lowering movement speed. Well, there we go, guys. If you've been enjoying Nod Air, that's it. Goodbye. Banshees have been taking a heavy nerf. The Venoms have uh, taken a nerf. I'm surprised we haven't seen Laser Drones taking another nerf just to fit the theme. Um, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Venoms, Venoms are solid. They really, really are. It's, this is kind of like the opposite of the drone swarm change that we mentioned earlier. Venoms get into, into position really, really quickly, like dangerously quickly. They are good at rinsing through laser squads and missile squads because they can get into position. And if that laser squad is distracted hitting something else, it's too late by the time they change to the Venom. On a ta against the Talon, a laser squad that's shooting at, say, a pit bull or, you know, bikes or whatever, you know, they're shooting at a vehicle and then suddenly along comes a Talon. If the laser squad suddenly retargets to the Talon, they'll pull it out of the sky remarkably quickly at equal levels. Venoms? Yeah, you don't get that. They get into position and start firing so quickly, it can be hard to react to. I love Venoms. Venoms are probably one of my favourite units in the game, so seeing them get nerfed kind of feels bad, but at the same time, again, I do kind of get it. Just, I feel bad that Nod Air is getting heavy hits this patch. Scavenger, move speed decreased from 6928 to 54, so they've actually really quite dropped. Now that players have become more comfortable with their mechanic, <laughs> okay, sure, I'm sure the people who are unlocking scavengers for the first time down in Gold League or whatever are definitely comfortable with that mechanic, it's time to tune down scavengers to a more reasonable level. I've not seen scavengers in ages, I'll be honest, maybe that's just me, I've not seen them at all. Like, people run laser squads rather than scavengers these days because the damage is atrocious and it can be really tricky to actually make the whole scavenging mechanic work if, you know, and, and if some people find it distracting. You've got to sit there and really focus on micromanaging these little, uh, these little girls into picking up your scrap for you. Now, that also means they already fit into very specific decks. And I suppose it's that whole tech is absolutely everywhere and ubiquitous thing. But I don't know. I don't know. I think scavengers have been hit with the nerf bat several times now, and there's a part of me that wonders if that's not just still knee-jerk uh, knee reactionary sort of stuff. People going, oh, scavengers, I don't like them, nerf them, nerf them. Um, and kind of that vocal, just please nerf, being a bit too much of an, uh, of an influence there. But I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't like scavengers anymore. I think they've really kind of almost, they're on the verge of falling out of what is already a niche position. Kane, Obelisk HP increased from 4,000 to 5,000. Kane is seeing low usage rates across all tiers. Well, of course, because Kane is the eternal joke of rivals. From terrible uh, graphics and makeup in the original rivals announcement trailer to just his, uh, to then being a joke with his, uh, like, Obelisk being ridiculous back in the early access days. Like, seriously, when you could put up two Obelisks. Yoo-hoo! Oh boy, those were fun days. To now being just utter useless garbage. Anyway, increasing the health of the obelisk to try and return some of his staying power. Yeah, good luck with that. Kane, Kane is so expensive and it just does so little. It's like, oh, you built an obelisk there. I will go around it. I will just wait for it to disappear and I will go around it. Or I will send in aircraft. Oh look, I've got a single talon. It's just going to sit right next to your obelisk and contest the pad that your obelisk cannot go on. You've just spent, what, 120 Tiberium putting up, essentially, a water feature. <laughs> just, yeah. Yeah. And woe betide anyone who's running mohawks, banshees, laser drones, anything, really, that happens to fly. Oh, look, I can just completely ignore the obelisk and deal insane damage to it and just take it off the board quickly. 120 Tiberium, thank you for wasting your input on a trash tier commander. Is Kane going to be fixed by this? No. No. I have no idea how to fix Kane without making him utterly oppressive. Just, I don't think there really is a way. I think the obelisk is just one of those things that... it. Once you're ahead with the obelisk, you, you it becomes oppressive. If you're behind with the obelisk, it's useless. I think that's kind of how it was when it was at its best. It just... It, it's how it is. It's just the design. Poor old Kane. Poor old Kane. Probably the greatest character in Command & Conquer history. Don't 
at me. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get comments in the uh, in the comment section about that. I can hear it. No, no, so and so was much better. No, Kane, Kane is the most iconic. There's no two ways about it. Kane is the most iconic, and he just oh, I feel so bad for him in in, in Rivals. Iconic character. And has never really had a proper place. He was either overly powerful and godly to utter trash. Sad times. But there we are. That, that's my thoughts on this balance patch. Overall, GDI, mainly um, some quite nice little buffs here and there for the Grenadier and the Drone Swarm. Liang, the Mammoth Tank and the Slingshot. Minor nerfs that kind of make sense. The Banshee, the Ken Buggy, the Fnatic, the Venom, the Scavenger. Um, all getting nerfed for Nod, so once again, Nod gets more nerfs than it gets buffs. Hashtag just saying. Um, and then Kane gets a buff. To me, again, most of those make sense. I'm a little worried about the chem buggy. I'm a little concerned about scavengers and Kane. Nah, don't make me laugh, it's Kane. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, people. I am always glad to hear you. If you've come in via Reddit, obviously drop a comment on the Reddit post as well. Let me know your thoughts or come join us on the Gaming Galleon Discord. Always happy to talk rivals. It's been a little bit quiet in there on my front re uh, recently. Again, in the UK, I do apologize. I'm flying back to Zimbabwe tomorrow. Um, and oh yeah, if you've stuck around this long into the video, congratulations, you're getting the uh, heads up on this one. I'm going to be doing a giveaway this weekend. If you're not on Twitter, get on Twitter. Even if it's just temporarily, there is going to be a giveaway from my Twitter account over uh, the next couple of days. That's all I'm saying, so I don't want to give you guys that have stayed this long too much of an advantage. Anyway, guys, thank you ever so much for watching. Look forward to hearing your opinions down below. Happy sailing and see you on the battlefield.